Okay, so now we're going to set up a purchase order for an ITAD pickup. So to get there quickly, I'm just going to go down here to POs and then hit new PO from the client vendor screen. So now we have a, since I, since I did this from within the client vendor uh, account of US Bank, it's going to automatically assign it to US Bank. Now I'll show over here, we've got their default terms and conditions, but over here we also have the default PO type is already set to ITAD because it was set as the default right here. And we also have the workflow template as US Bank default because it was right here. And uh, the erasure serve or the service fee is set to ITAD simple and the erasure method DOD because they are all set right here. Now I will point out that there is the occasion where depending on the type of job or the kind of uh, special project, you might have to change any of these things based on the particular work that's at hand. So you can actually select a different template. I don't have extra ones in here, but you can click, select different ones or even go in here and modify it and then save a new template for this particular job. So you can set a default for any of these values in the client vendor, but change them on the PO level so you can override them. I will also point out uh, for those that are doing consignment projects, if you're doing that, um, if you wanna set this up as a consignment job, all you need to do is just type in what their consignment uh, margin, supplier margin percentage is right here when you create the PO, and then this will trigger the um, uh, margin of the automatically assigned to them in their consignment reports. Now for this particular job, I'm just gonna make this simple. I'm just gonna say that um, a pallet is being uh, purchased. So we've got a PA, uh, no, I don't have an act on here. What do we call it here? Let me go and look it up. I think I have one in here called pallet. Ah, pallet of unprocessed, ah, there it was. Okay, so I'm going to select this, and um, I'm going to make this be pretty pretty straightforward. I'm going to be using the existing U.S. Bank default workflow template and the ITAD Simple Work Services fee. So I'm just going to go ahead and say that there's one pallet, and that's it. And I'll hit Save. And since we're going to be doing a consignment job, I'm going to bring this in at zero cost. So as I'm starting to process this, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to receive it. So first step is to go to the receive screen. And that brings me to this screen right here where I'll go to items to receive. And now what I want to do is weigh this. So let's say this weighs um, 150 pounds because if you're doing any sort of um, any sort of uh, R2 reporting or have to you know, do mass balance reports, we have to weigh the incoming pallets. And then we're going to say what it is that's on it. So maybe I'll start to break it down. Now, I will note that this isn't necessary to actually identify these if you are using, let's say, um, SoftThinks or WipeOS and have them set up properly. So I'm just going to say that this pallet contained 10 Elite Book 2540Ps, and they're going to start in the as-is condition. So I'll hit Save. So if this is fully broken down, we will actually remove the pallet after we've waited. Because when we build those mass balance reports, we will look to all pallets that have been removed in the, in the inventory history to generate the incoming weight. So even though we're removing it, it doesn't get removed from the system. It just moves from inventory to inventory history. Okay. Now, there's a couple options here. So on the one hand, what I'm doing is I'm receiving these goods and I'm recording serial numbers to receive them. So I'm actually going to take a barcode now and start scanning serial numbers. And you'll notice that it's marking um, over here on the right hand side. It's checking the box automatically as I am uh, scanning serial numbers. I'm gonna scan one here. Um, there we go. So now we've got all of them received. Now, I'll, I'll also point out that if you want, we can also re receive or set up the product attributes as well. So maybe we'll go in here and mark these off and say that they're uh, these are all notebooks and that they are Core i7s. And so um, other videos that we've released kind of explain product attributes a little bit more in depth. But I just want to point out that this is basically where you can track the value of a machine. 
And as we're creating these things, um, I'll go to rename it here. You can mark these as billable services. And actually this one's a little bit goofy. So let's go down here to erasure um, results. So maybe we'll go down here. This is where you can you could say that these are billable services. And that's kind of how I flagged that in, in the uh, previous video when we looked at the, um, the billable services fee schedule is that you can mark either a process step like a condition code change or a value in here. So if there are many different kinds of erasure methods being performed, then you could break it down by the type that's done. But uh, we can go ahead and manually check these off. Uh, we'll say that they've all passed and um, say that they've got some wear and tear. And I'm just showing this to show that the, the uh, attributes can not only, they don't have to just be like technical specifications that you might be tracking, like, you know, the processor and the memory and the storage type like I'm doing right now, but they can also be pretty much anything you want it to be. So here I've got a mix. I've got, you know, form factor, CPU models, and, um, and stuff like that. When we're setting these up, you can also create other ones. Like if I go down here, um, these ones can be, these are all con considered a standard attribute where you can check or multiple or singular options. But if we go down in here to um, licensing found, this is actually something we call a text only. So you can, you can, um, you can't expand and see any of the existing options because this is something that we might assume is going to be a one-time use only. So maybe if we're going to add something to uh, license hardware licensing found or licensing found that every single machine might have something a little bit different and we don't want to have you know dozens or hundreds or thousands of different check boxes so we'll just treat that as like data only As a matter of fact I think a better use for this would be hard drive serial number one hard drive serial number two etc cetera, etc cetera, so that it's kind of like a one-time consuming use um, there we go probably wouldn't do that as a value attribute, but there you go. And, and you can do other things too, like whether or not photos have been taken, um, you can track those things. So in, in my example, I'm just gonna say that I've kind of collected a lot of data in this screen. And this isn't always the case. Um, if you're using SoftThinks or WipeOS, um, and possibly Aiken is also working on a solution as well, in that case, instead of actually labeling these things like saying it's elite book and collecting the serial number and collecting the attributes either now or at a different screen by manually checking those things, our data erasure API allows for the part number and manufacturer to be updated through the API from your erasure software since it's going to be doing a BIOS check anyway. So in that case, you might just label this as DBA. So standing for data bearing asset. And you might leave the serial number blank because the BIOS is gonna check the serial number and they can update it through the API. And also same thing with all the product attributes, even down to um, some of the things that seem a little bit less intuitive, like um, like the uh, my example here, chassis, uh, my, like chassis display or keyboard condition and touchpad condition. Um, it's not uncommon for WipeOS or SoftThinks to create drop down menus that coincide with these values. So like literally all you're doing in this screen here for IQ reseller is printing a simple label like this one here. We'll go to like a uh, two, two by one PO. So you might just call it a data bearing asset. And then when you go to print the labels, you'll print something simple that just has a barcode on it basically. And then you scan the barcode into the user defined field that's been set up for you by SoftThinks or WipeOS. And then SoftThinks or WipeOS will update your item number, serial, and so on and so forth. Otherwise, you can also set those up in here um, if that's the case. And you know, this would be probably the case with things like monitors or uh, non data bearing assets that you might get in. And in that case, you might actually wanna go ahead and print the labels here with more data, like I show in that one that has um, four by two with attributes that puts a part number or item number here. It puts the serial number both as a barcode and a readable form. The POID, which represents the purchase order and the line item, rep, condition code, location that it's supposed to be in, the vendor, but you can turn vendor off, description, and that actually prints your um, attributes right there on the screen. 
along with the barcode. That barcode represents the inventory ID. So that's the control number that IQ Reseller gives every piece of inventory that comes through the system. Otherwise, if I'm done receiving stuff here, uh, I can hit receive and it will receive everything that's checked and remove everything for remove. If there's new items that I found, I could hit new item and then type in what the product is. Uh, maybe we have uh, an elite desk. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and put an elite desk on there too, just a single one as is, and we'll hit save. So you, as long as this hasn't has at least some items that haven't been um, fully received yet, you can continue to, to add more items to it. Anything that's in the yellow color, by the way, we can also change here too. So you can always do that as well. Otherwise, if I'm all good here, I'm going to hit the receive button, and now I have fully received it. And I'm going to make another video showing how we process items after receipt.